everyone knows who's here. To my far right, Ted Cummings, Director of State Operations. The good Dr. Howard Zucker, Secretary to the Governor, Melissa DeRosa. The, uh, I'm gonna start with a participatory press conference. This is a participatory press conference today. So with some good news. Uh, there will be a prize for whoever answers uh, the question correctly. I have been lamenting about an issue for the past few days. Well, let's be honest, I've been lamenting about a number of issues for the past few days. But one in particular that is egregious, and I have raised it almost every press conference for the past week. What is that issue that I have been raising as egregious for the past week? CDC did allow testing is a good answer. That's true. Not the answer I'm looking for. Remaining calm. Remaining calm. Price, who said price gouging? Okay, price gouging. Most egregious, price gouging on what? Theft of medical supplies. Theft of medical supplies. What else? Hand sanitizer. Okay, so now we are problem solvers. State of New York, Empire State. Progressive capital of the nation. You're a problem solver. You're price gouging on hand sanitizer and a high demand for hand sanitizer. What do you do? Order every distillery in the state to start producing hand sanitizer. Distilleries? Yes. Close down bourbon? Never. What, <laughs> what else do you do? Make your own hand sanitizer? Can you do that? You should be governor. Open the curtain, please. We are introducing New York State clean hand sanitizer made conveniently by the state of New York. This is a superior product to products now on the market. Uh, the, uh, the World Health Organization, CDC, all those people suggest 60% alcohol content. Purell, competitor to New York State Clean, 70% alcohol. This is 75% alcohol. It also has a it comes in a variety of sizes. It has a very nice floral bouquet. A little I detected lilac, hydrangea, tulips. What does it smell like to you? Tulips, yes. Floral bouquet, making it in the state of New York. Uh, Corecraft actually is making it for the state. Corecraft makes glass cleaner, floor cleaners, degreasers, laundry detergent, vehicle fluids, hand cleaner, and now they make hand sanitizer with alcohol. Uh, the, we're, our current capacity is 100,000 gallons per week, and we're going to be ramping up We'll be providing this to governmental agencies, schools, the MTA, uh, prisons, et cetera, because you can't get it on the market. And when you get it, it's very, very expensive. Uh, so that is now in production. We'll start distribution. We're going to distribute it to New Rochelle, which is a hot spot for us, uh, because literally we're hearing from governments that they're having trouble uh, getting it. The, also, to Purell and Mr. Amazon and Mr. eBay, if you continue the price gouging, we will introduce our product, which is superior to your product, and you don't even have the floral bouquet. So stop price gouging. This is also much less expensive than anything uh, government could buy. Just to give you an idea, a gallon bottle is $6.10. The seven ounce bottle uh, is a dollar twelve our cost. And then there's a very small size. Here it is. 
which is 84 cents. So it's much cheaper for us to make it ourselves than to buy it on the open market. And I want to thank Kelly Cummings, who got this going, and Corecraft very much uh, for their good work. And uh, with that, we'll turn, turn it to a couple of other measures. Uh, the CDC has been speaking with us on how to handle hotspots. The CDC is going to be coming out with additional guidance soon. Uh, but New Rochelle is a significant hotspot, even if you look at the overall map of the United States. Uh, so we will be talking about uh, school closings in that area. We have closed the schools now. The question will be duration. But we could be talking weeks. Uh, Dr. Zucker has a discussion with the CDC and the FDA later on about how long to keep those schools closed. Uh, but I think at this point, it's fair to say uh, we're talking about a number of weeks. Uh, for all schools, we're going to set a policy that if a student tests positive in a school, that school is closed for an initial 24-hour period so that we can do an assessment of the situation and the facts uh, and then make a determination going forward, given the facts in that uh, particular school district. And the Department of Health is going to be doing a joint regulation uh, with SED uh, on that. Paid sick leave quarantine, uh, we'll, go, we'll be sending up a bill today. As you know, I proposed paid sick leave, which uh, before any of this coronavirus uh, even began, but it's even more important now. Uh, I think it's especially important that if government is ordering a quarantine, even a voluntary quarantine, uh, that places a personal hardship on a person, that person should get paid. And uh, we're going to be sending up a bill to the legislature. I'm going to speak to the legislative leaders about that today because we have a significant number of people now on quarantine. and. Uh, uh, I don't want to add to the burden that we're creating. And I think the business community, it's in their interest that people actually stay home and stop the spread. Uh, so I feel good about that law. I just want to get it passed. Uh, I want to reiterate a point that we have made before. The people at risk here are senior citizens, people with a compromised immune system, uh, people with an underlying illness. But they should take it seriously. And uh, for people in that category, they should adjust their interactions, so-called social distancing. Uh, I had this conversation with my mother. I said, look, you know, you want to be careful. This is not the time uh, to be going to large gatherings. Uh, so use your discretion, use your intelligence. It's not the time to be getting on a, a long plane flight. Uh, you know, we, the fear and the hysteria is outpacing the reality of this situation. But the reality of the situation is people in that target group should be careful, right? So let's be realistic on the overall hysteria and hype that we're now living through. But the reality is, for that vulnerable population, they should be taking precautions. We have uh, our Port Authority director, Rick Cotton, who has been doing a magnificent job handling the airports. JFK is one of the main airports for people coming in on those overseas flights. Uh, Rick Cotton does have, has tested positive for the coronavirus. So he is going to be on uh, quarantine. He'll be working at home. He's the executive director of the Port Authority, so he's been at the airports, obviously, uh, when many people were coming back uh, with the virus. Uh, he'll be working from home, and now uh, the senior team that works with Rick will also be tested. So uh, several of them may be on quarantine and they'll be working from home. 
The testing, we'll go through the latest numbers. But let's also remember the context we're testing if we can. The more you test, the more positives you will find. And you are testing pr primarily a suspect group because we're testing people who we believe came in contact with a positive person. We want that data because we want to find out who's positive so we can isolate them and reduce the spread. Uh, but it is not a random sample. It is not statistically representative of anything. It's, it's testing a particular universe that we believe may very well have been exposed to a positive person. Uh, so it's not uh, statistically, uh, I don't know what it means. I take it as good news because I want to be finding the positive so we can isolate them and we can reduce the spread. Uh, and that's what the testing is all about. So we did additional testing. We've been basically testing around the clock now. Uh, Westchester, you see, is up to 98. New York City, 19. Nassau, 17. Rockland, 4. Saratoga, 2. Suffolk, 1. Ulster, 1. Westchester is our problem, as you see from the numbers. That is a relatively small community in New Rochelle. 98 cases, more than the city of New York. Uh, and that makes the point about gatherings. And that's uh, my conversation with my mother. And that's the caution flag. Uh, it's this communicates, uh, transmits more easily than the flu. And in Westchester, what happened was there were a number of large gatherings, several hundred people, and it uh, transmitted through that congregation. But this is the hot spot. Uh, one of the hot spots nationally, by the way, is the New Rochelle hot spot. So it makes the point about how it can communicate in gatherings uh, and uh, why people have to be careful. But those are the, uh, the recent numbers, 142. With 142 cases, it puts New York uh, well, it puts New York actually ahead of Washington. Uh, they just updated these numbers. California 111, Massachusetts at 28. And you can see the other New York, the other national cases. Context, all these numbers, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? All day long I have people calling me up and saying, here are all these numbers, what does it mean? It means you find the positives, you reduce the spread. What is the bottom line? What does this mean? People are reacting like this is the Ebola virus. This is not the Ebola virus. This hysteria that you see, this fear that you see, the panic that you see is unwarranted. We have dealt with worse viruses. This spreads like the flu, uh, but most people will have it and they get on with their lives. Many people will have it and not know that they have it. So we have 142 cases. Oh, 142 cases. What does that mean? Only eight of the 142 are hospitalized. Well, how can that be? The others are at home, like they have the flu. Eight out of 142, those are people who predominantly have an underlying illness. Remember, this is basically pneumonia. When is pneumonia dangerous? When you have an underlying Ill illness. Not just this virus. Uh, for decades, when is pneumonia problematic? When you have an underlying illness. And that's what this is. So eight out of 142 puts it in focus and puts it in perspective. And this is the single most demonstrative fact, OK? All this hyperbole, all these opinions. What's the fact? Johns Hopkins tracks every 
coronavirus case since it started. What happened? 111,000 cases, 3,800 deaths, 62,000 recovered, 45,000 pending, still recovering. That's it. That's tracking every coronavirus case. It's not good that 3,800 people passed away. That's true. That is very true. By the way, 10 times that number will pass away from the flu this year. Now, people don't realize that. They don't think about it. But that's what the flu does on a seasonal basis. So a little perspective. We have to keep it all in perspective. Uh, and with that, I'll end there and take your questions. But I am a man of my word. Here is your prize. Please come up. This is a collector item. <laughs> this is, this is, you, know, you can't use it. It's because it's a collector item. It's more valuable. You can sell this on eBay in about 10 years. It's, <laughs> it is not after 10 years, no. It's 0001. It is the first gallon container off the line. This is literally number one. And it is for you. Please come and claim your gallon. Very well done. Um, and to keeping it perspective, do you have any thoughts to limiting large gatherings at the Capitol or possibly even postponing session for a couple of weeks? There's an idea. Postpone session. Send the legislature home. Yeah. You know, you, this is all about reducing the spread, reducing the number of people who get it. Why? because you want to protect the vulnerable population. That's all this is. It comes back to my mother. It comes back to the vulnerable population. And the more people have it, the more dangerous for the vulnerable population. School child, why do you close the school? School child gets it. This, uh, this virus has very limited effect on children to the best we know. But the child goes home and kisses his grandmother. The grandmother had an underlying illness. Now we have a problem. That's all this is about. So you calibrate your response to the facts. We have a major problem in New Rochelle. We are going to be closing schools for weeks. Uh, we will take action on gatherings in that area. Yes. Beyond that, at this time, no. We find another cluster, we'll act accordingly. Just from, and doctor, from just going through nursing homes, um, if it's more contagious than the flu. So I think this is why we are speaking with the nursing homes and about limiting the number of people there uh, so that we don't end up with a problem that, that you mentioned. Uh, it goes back to the basic public health messages to make sure that people recognize that they should wash their hands, sneeze into their sleeve, stay home if they're sick, uh, and we are putting notices out in front of the nursing homes as well. You're, you're limiting the number of people who can go in. Well, so we have recommended it to the nursing home leadership that, that you shouldn't have many people gathering or coming into nursing homes. I recognize people want to visit their relatives, uh, but it's really important to make sure that they're not sick when they're walking in there. People can be tested in New York at this point. How many people can be tested for coronavirus at this point each day in New York? So, so, we, so we have, we can test, you know, there's multiple places that we're working on testing. So we have several hundred just in the state that we can do. Um, and there are additionally at the other hospitals that we are working with to increase that volume. Uh, and that will be increasing exponentially as the days go by. I spoke to the vice president this morning. Uh, who's helping us bring on our private labs and bring on what's called automated testing, which has to be validated by the federal government. Automated testing increases dramatically 
your testing capacity. Uh, take Northwell Labs, uh, for example, I was there yesterday. Uh, they can manually do about 80 tests per day. Automated, they can do 1,000. Uh, so I spoke with the Vice President and uh, CDC and FDA are going to, to follow up with Dr. Zucker to accelerate the private labs coming online and doing automated testing. That will be a uh, game changer. How many people have been tested so far? Excuse me, I'm sorry, one in a second. The, uh, on the previous question about nursing homes, we've closed the New Rochelle nursing homes to visitors because you're, the basic premise of the question is right. Uh, a nursing home, what do I worry about? Nursing homes, senior care facilities, congregate senior set citizen complexes. Are you suggesting that senior living homes and nursing homes should just take some preemptive measures right now and just immediately kind of shut down visiting? Is that what you're well, saying? Well, preemptive measures, yes. That's what Dr. Zucker was speaking about. Hyper-cautious, yes. Uh, closing off all visitors, no. We're only doing that in no, New Rochelle. A nursing home may make that decision, but it's a hard decision, right? These are people who are in a nursing home. They, they're looking to see visitors. They want to see their family. But on the other hand, this is the vulnerable population. And literally, the image in my mind is uh, Johnny, uh, nine-year-old Johnny, goes and kisses his grandmother, and now there's an issue. We're talking yeah. about public gatherings. We right now have Purim, but we're coming up on Easter as well. Can you talk about that and your concerns about gatherings? Well, again, we'll gauge, you gauge this almost on a daily basis. Uh, in Rochelle, in a cluster situation, then you do what you have to do. Schools, gatherings, nursing homes. Uh, beyond that, uh, we don't have any significant clusters beyond that, so we'll calibrate to that time. They're talking about what to do about gatherings uh, all across the country now, sports games, et cetera, concerts, ballparks. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll see what happens with the numbers and how quickly it moves. The, the hand sanitizer, you said $6 a gallon. Is that the, the price that you'll be charging, or is that what it costs to make? That is what it costs us. For you, $12. <laughs> because we like you. No, no, no. We have to make a profit. Fair enough. Uh, so are you selling this to municipalities and, and no, schools? No, we're providing, providing it. Charge. We're providing it. And then Warcraft, that, that's, that's a prison labor company, right? Do you know where this is being manufactured? Corrections Craft, Corecraft, hence the name, Corecraft. Fancy yeah. label. Uh, this was produced. Great Meadow. Great Meadow. In Washington. 100,000 gallons per week current capacity. Do we know any? SUNY students came home over the weekend. They're split up between the three campuses. The majority of them actually chose to do home quarantine, and so that's where the majority of them are. We can get you specific numbers per campus after this. No politics today. What is the state actively doing to ensure, particularly in Westchester, that people who are under mandatory quarantine are actually staying at home? We're hearing downstate there's people are, are not. They're actually going out into the community. Mandatory quarantine. It is mandatory that the local health department have a person go to the home at a random interval at least once a day, at least once a day, to confirm the person is in the home and to assess their well-being. If a person violates mandatory uh, quarantine, there are significant sanctions. But it, so it is being monitored, checked. If they're in the law, they're civil uh, sanctions, basically. What about, so it's what about the people who county's responsibility, then it's not the state's responsibility? To the, the, we, we have mandated that the local health department monitor mandatory quarantined people. If we had any reason to believe the local health department didn't do it or couldn't do it or wouldn't do it, we would do it ourselves. 
but we haven't gotten, excuse me one second, okay, take it easy. Uh, we have no reason to believe that uh, a local health department isn't doing it. I'm sorry, go ahead, Joe. Uh, Johns Hopkins, Governor, uh, uh, they have a data dashboard, and you gave out some numbers today, the, the latest numbers. When, when do they go to Johns Hopkins? Uh, after you announce them or before you announce them? Oh, these are Johns Hopkins na uh, international numbers. I mean, they're state numbers. I'm just wondering what... Oh, I don't know when Johns Hopkins gets them. Okay. But look, of, of, of a hun they have a, uh, 111,000 cases. We're like 130 or something. Right, but I mean, is, is there some opportunity here for the state to create its own data dashboard with the latest... So just say you get another 20 cases later on this afternoon. After your announcement, would you wait until the next day to announce that? Or, or is there a way Unless to it's... I don't do it overnight. Mm -hmm. But if it's otherwise, I come out and I give you the numbers when I get them. How is that dealing with, uh, with quarantine for people who might not have a home? I don't know that we have dealt with that situation. Well, we put some people up in hotels, congregate facilities. Just on the New Rochelle School, just so we're clear, uh, CDC is going to provide guidance. They have been advising uh, Dr. Zucker and they are advising a number of weeks to keep the New Rochelle schools closed. How many weeks, uh, we don't know yet, but a number of weeks that we know. Yes, yes. So they will continue to be closed for a number of weeks. Actually, I'm sorry, Governor, the public schools are not closed currently. The public schools are not, are closed, not currently. closed currently. But what CDC was saying to Dr. Zucker is that they're considering advising that they close all of the schools because it's a cluster hotspot for a number of weeks. Do you want to speak? Let Dr. Zucker speak to it. So it would be in terms of which New Rochelle closed schools need to be closed. As of right now, it's the Hopkins School District, the Johns Hopkins School District, and the Take that. Sure, because it's community spread and because that is a concern, saying that just a handful of schools, the, the schools that we have, have closed right now, are the only place where this is going to be a problem is not the answer. So you need to look at it as a community, and there are other public schools in that community, so we will be speaking with them as well to keep all of those schools closed. And, and the, the public schools which are not currently closed in New Rochelle, they will be closing? Is that what you're saying? To keep the, to keep the spread from, from going yeah, further. In that, when will they be closed? We're going to work on that today. Yeah, How is the state preparing for revenue impacts? Well? And Scarsdale as well. And if we are, you know, I, you know, the modern Orthodox community is the focus here. Some kids, I'm sure, go to yeshivas elsewhere. One girl, of course, went to uh, yeshiva in Bronxville. So is it just New Rochelle, or are we looking more broadly? Well, the Scarsdale system closed their school down the other day. Um, so there's a Scarsdale school system, so it's more than just one school, obviously. Uh, and... I recognize what you're saying, that, that they may move around to different areas, but the thing is to address the hot spot area and those particular schools there. And, and then we will work. This is where part of the investigation has to be done to look and see where some of the other kids go and to identify them. If there is someone positive in one of the other schools, we will address that accordingly. I think, I think Scarsdale closed their schools down uh, last night. So it, it is accurate to say the state is considering closing New Rochelle schools for a period of weeks on the recommendation of the, of the CDC? Correct, that the CDC is, is, is um, has, we spoke with the CDC and in an effort to try to control the spread of disease, look at the hot spots and identify them and close the schools in that area. Well, why do you anticipate making a, a decision on that? Since that's what we're working on today. How is the state preparing uh, for revenue impacts due to the coronavirus's impact on the stock market? We'll see what it is and we'll deal with it. Well, I want to talk to the. I want. I would like to get it done quickly. We put forth a paid sick leave bill. Uh, the paid sick leave bill did not cover the period of quarantine. When we did the bill, it was the initial concept of the bill was before before all of this. So you now have two situations. Basically, you have paid sick leave in general, which was a good idea before. If a person is sick, don't come to the office. You don't want them to come to the office, but then uh, paid sick leave. And now you have the specific of the quarantine period. Uh, and the people on, are on quarantine now, and we're saying to people now, you should stay home. Uh, that quarantine period should be covered. 
that's what you know that's going to be in the specific of the bill Nick but I want to get that quarantine period addressed because there's only going to be more people these numbers are going to continue to go one direction and that is up they're going to continue to increase the quarantines will continue to increase the number of people will continue to increase I said the first day you're going to see these numbers go up exponentially every day because it is mathematics. They must go up. We're testing. The more we test, the more the numbers will go up. And by the way, nobody know, has a baseline. I would wager that if you did a random sample of the population, the number of people who have had coronavirus is much higher than anyone has ever seen on any test. Uh, we just happened to start testing at a particular point in time. My guess is it was here before, uh, and it's bigger. Well, all we're trying to do is reduce the spread, so find the positive, isolate it, reduce the spread. But I have no doubt that the numbers are going to continue to increase. And that's why, so what's the bottom line on the situation, right? That's what people want to know. What's the bottom line? The bottom line is the Johns Hopkins da data, 111,000 cases, 3,000 mortalities. Yes, uh, sad and tragic, but uh, people die. And people die of diseases, and people die of the flu. But this is not Ebola. This is not SARS. This is not some science fiction movie come to light. Uh, you know, the hysteria here is way uh, out of line with the actuality and the facts. But for a vulnerable population member, senior citizen, underlying illness, be careful. Be careful. The way you would be careful with the flu. That's it. Those are the facts. Those are just the facts. And the facts are comforting once you see them and once you understand them. And that's why I use the numbers. Johns Hopkins, they're not political, they're not Democrats, they're not Republicans. And the numbers are the numbers. That's uh, tracking the entire universe. 111,000 cases. What's there to worry about? What are doing to make sure they have hospital beds? What about daycare facilities? Because that's something that we haven't really talked about here, especially in-home daycare facilities that really aren't checked as much. Yeah, but, you know, and the doctor can speak to this better than I can. You're not seeing large numbers in young people. Well, they're, they're transmitted to them, so... Yes. Yes. But... Uh, they themselves are not, uh, not infected by, uh, uh, affected by it. Jeff, have you and your team been tested? I have not been. Do you think because it could not have, it might not have symptoms that, that that's a good idea at some point since you are in contact with people and might test or no? At one point it might be a good idea. The, I don't, I have not personally really been in contact with people in Westchester. Uh, I could have been in contact with Rick Cotton. Yeah, I don't think, look, everybody could be tested, right? The truth is we don't have the testing capacity. We have that protocol on the testing because we can't test people on that kind of whim, you know? Uh, you just don't have the numbers. Even when we get up to scale, you know, you're talking about at best being able to test several thousand. So you want to prioritize who you test because you're looking for the positive. I am not a probable positive. We're looking for the probable positives. We're not looking for a random sample. We're looking to test the probable positives, to stop them and isolate them. What's the state doing to make sure there are enough hospital beds? I'm an improbable positive. What's the state doing to make sure that there are enough hospital beds for coronavirus patients, particularly vulnerable ones, if it gets to that point? We do census. We take a census of the available hospital beds, and uh, that is not an issue at this time. Governor, the federal court in Manhattan has closed its doors today to people. I'm sorry, the federal court in Manhattan has closed its doors today to people that have visited those five main countries with the outbreak over the last two weeks. 
Is the state considering any similar action in the state courts? Not at this time. Dude, um, you, you mentioned so the, it's now a policy that if one student at a public school tests positive for COVID-19 or coronavirus, the school is closed for at least one day? Yes. And can you just talk a little DOH bit DOH and SED are going to issue a joint regulation today saying if a child tests positive in a school, that school is closed for 24 hours to assess the facts and circumstances of that school and determine what should be done going forward. Is that accurate? That's correct. School. That's correct. School. And then for parents who might be thinking, what is the threshold for a closure? I know Columbia University, one case, everything's closed. I think other universities, private schools are thinking this. What, what for public school parents should they know is going to be the threshold here? A student tests positive in a school is the threshold. Yeah, but, but then just 24 a week, two no. days? A minimum 24 to assess, and then there'll be a determination. You want to speak to that? Thanks. Right, right. right. So exactly what you bring up is that if you, you have a positive case, you want someone to go in there and clean the environment, and at the same time, the department working with SED will try to investigate to figure out where did that child get uh, end up positive. It may just be obviously in the community, but let's try to get a little bit more uh, information, and that's the purpose. Just to clarify, I said this had a floral bouquet. That was a joke. I don't know that it necessarily has a floral bouquet. I did detect a hint of citrus, however, but you be your own judge. Thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, on the telephone today, but that's it. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking my hand sanitizer. <laughs>